What, an, what a good start to our experience. I just blew your eardrums out. Sorry. Please forgive me. You all look wonderful today, by the way. Also, how awesome is Josh? Can we give him a round of applause? That was great. So as someone who was sitting in the front row, the animations were amazing. I'm sorry you all missed them. Maybe he can give us like a private viewing sometime. I think that would be really cool. Um, so that's me looking really happy. So my name is Julie. Um, on most things on the internet, I'm Nerdcore. I'm on GitHub, Twitter, Instagram, RDO, all of the things. Um, so I work for a company called GitHub. I was already introed. I expected to have to tell you guys these things myself. Um, so now you get to hear them twice um, with wonderful photography. So I work for a company called GitHub. And I do, I'm a designer and front-end engineer. Um, I like to say that I design in code. But I think I sound much smarter if I tell people I think in code like a robot. It's like the movie Hackers, basically. That's what my life is like. Oh, here we go. OK. Um, so there's been a lot of talk about diversity in technology lately, um, specifically the lack of diversity, and really um, importantly, the lack of female role models and uh, founders and just leadership in our industry. So raise your hand if you've read a, a blog post or a tweet about diversity in tech recently. Yeah, I thought so. I thought so. Um, so I got really fed up with all the talking last year. Um, and I decided to take action for the first time, not in my life, but uh, towards this particular cause. Um, so in January of last year, I founded, a, I founded a thing called Passion Projects. How many of you have heard of Passion Projects? It's GitHub Passion Projects. OK, that's a few. Oh, that's so exciting. Thank you for being here. Um, so Passion Projects is a monthly speaker series that's dedicated to surfacing and celebrating the work of some of the most incredible women in our industry. Because believe it or not, they actually do exist. There are women in tech, you just don't hear from them as often. So we've now done eight talks um, at GitHub HQ here in San Francisco. Um, we have speakers booked through next April, which is really exciting for me. Um, and we've received over 50 speaker suggestions from uh, the tech community at large. So what's even more important than any of those things uh, is that we're amplifying the voices of women in technology. That's what I'm excited about anyways. Yeah, whoever whistled. You're my new favorite. Um, OK, so you can find all the talks. They're all recorded. We also did a short documentary series um, at this URL. And I, unlike Josh, didn't put anything at the bottom of my slides. So you can read all of my things. Um, so. So this is fun. Um, so we say a lot of crazy shit at GitHub. Oh, I should also mention that if you are offended by um, uh, foul language or honesty, this talk might not be for you. And I will not be offended if you get up and leave right now, I promise. But I wanted to give you fair warning. Um, so we say a lot of crazy stuff at GitHub. Um, there's an equal amount of crazy stuff said about us in the news, about our culture, and about the way that we work. Uh, in my experience, this is the only thing that has stood up over at least the last two years that I've been at GitHub. Since then, a ton has happened for me and the company in general. Our design team was eight people then, and it's now a team of 22 or 23 wonderful and talented people. Um, as a company, we're now a team of 222 <laughs> people, um, and that's everyone from engineers, designers, people ops, HR, um, sales experts, highly skilled organizers, all of those people. We're now a company of 222 people. So today I want to talk about working as a team, uh, and more importantly, shipping as a team, and what that means for a company that size, or just as you grow in general as a startup. And at least I want to tell you a couple things that I've learned over the last two years. And if I'm talking too fast, can someone be like my stop? I stop, maybe Missy can do it for me. Um, someone just like throw up your hands, like an SOS or something like that, and I'll try to slow down a little bit. Because this is an experience. We're having an experience. Um, OK, so first, I want to talk about this guy. I'm pronouncing the visionary in tech dead right now. You saw it. It's murder. Tweet about it. Do whatever you need to do. Um, so the definition of visionary is thinking or planning about the, or planning the future with imagination or wisdom. Some of the synonyms um, of visionary are inspired, imaginative, creative, inventive, ingenious, enterprising, innovative. So my question for everyone in this room right now is, does anyone in this room not have an imagination? 
Can you raise your hand if you think you don't have an imagination? I knew there would be one. I knew there would be one. Um, he's trolling me. Um, okay, so what I think the visionary means in our industry is male. I've never heard of a woman or a female founder be referred to as a visionary. I think it means um, someone that's married to their ideas and unable to let go of them. I think that it's someone who's difficult to work with. I think it's someone who's unapologetic. And most importantly, I think it's someone that's abrasive. Um, I recently spoke on a panel at GigaOM's Roadmap Design Conference. Uh, and we had a question, a Q&A section. There was five really awesome designers, uh, myself included. I felt really honored to be uh, like on that lineup. But we had this question at the end of the uh, panel. And someone asked, how do I execute an on an idea with a team? How do, I do, how do I manage that? And one of the panelists, bless his heart, I noticed that in, the, in like the South, that's what you say before you're about to really offend someone. <laughs> you're like, oh, bless their heart, you know? Bless their heart. Um, I'm not gonna do that. But, um, so he responded with something along the lines of, stick to your vision. Whatever it is, stick to your vision at all costs. I think my heart broke so hard at that moment because I realized how many um, entrepreneurs were sitting in that crowd and what they were gonna take away from that is fuck what everyone else in your company thinks. You own, you own that vision and protect it regardless of who tries to iterate on it or change it. Um, so my, my answer to that question, I raised my hand, I got really aggressive in there, you know, I was like, no, I have something to say. Um, <laughs> I said, if you do anything, learn not to be married to your ideas. Um, learn how to iterate on your vision. People who cling to their ideas can bring an entire team down. If your idea doesn't change, and if you don't iterate on it, it's gonna die with this guy. In tech more than any other industry, people mistake being an asshole with being intelligent. <laughs> being an asshole doesn't prove you're good at anything. It really doesn't. So in, if you work in technology, how many people in this room work in technology? This is fun. Um, you're my people. We're friends. You're my people. Um, if you work in technology, you probably work with people. Correct? Yeah? Nice little head nod going? OK. I'm into that. Um, so I think we've really forgotten how important people are to the process. And I really love how Josh mentioned that communication. Like, you can be the smartest people and the, at the smartest company with the most talent in our industry. But if you don't know how to communicate with other people, you're probably going to fail or it's gonna be an incredibly hostile environment. Um, I've worked at three startups in my career, not very many, but I've, I've seen some inc incredible experiences and some incredible growth and I've worked with a lot of people. At every single one, I've been told by someone in a leadership role that we are at war with our competition. <laughs> It was a really funny story, actually. So I um, was a really early employee at Yammer. And uh, I came in one day, and we had had this really brilliant talk by our CEO, whose name is David Sachs. He was an incredible mentor and um, entrepreneur. He's done a lot of really interesting things in his career. But he gave this whole speech about how we're at war with you know, our competition, our competing products. Next day, I came into the office. And one of my coworkers, like an engineer, had um, you know those like camouflage blankets? He had built a fort over his desk. <laughs> and I come in and I'm like, this isn't normal. I mean, I was still getting used to like the weird startup culture to begin with, but I was like, mm, this seems out of place. So I walk over to his desk and I'm like, what are you, what's going, can I come in? Like, can I knock, do I do this? Like, how do I get into this fort? Um, and he's like, oh no, we're at war now. Haven't you heard? Like, we're, go we're at war. So the, <laughs> so the problem with the war analogy, uh, or the, the go to war mentality, is that they're poisonous and they do, they foster hostile work environments. I don't want startup PTSD. That sounds horrible. I wanna work with other people and I wanna do really cool stuff. You can't build a company alone. And the thing about going to war or like the go to war mentality is we don't go to war. People who wake up and go to war, wake up and go to war. What we do <laughs> is we wake up and we get to work with you know, 10, 20, 40, 60, 100, 200, 500, you know, if you're Salesforce, what, like 20,000? Maybe that's more of a Google number. You can tell I don't read the news. Um, we work with other people. We don't go to war. That, does that look like war to you guys? That doesn't really look like war to me. If you take, there you go. If you take anything from my talk today, um, 
I messed up. I'm going to go back once. OK, so people can be incredibly complicated, um, and they can be extremely difficult to understand, and just difficult in general. But if you take anything from my talk today, let it be that people are worth your time. And they're worth your energy, and you can't build a company alone. Building a team, and not just any team, but a good team, is imperative to your company's success. OK, you might say, how do I build an awesome team? I'm going to help you. Beware conflated acronyms. Another thing I've noticed in my startup career is that visionary types love acronyms for things. They love it, right? I'm sure there's like a really important meeting going on somewhere, like at a VC company, um, where everyone is just only speaking in acronyms and nothing's really being said. Um, so these letters at GitHub, they actually stand for things. And it's shipping culture and taste. And these are the things we look for in the people we want to hire. These are the things we interview for. In the last year or so, I've interviewed a ton of people, and we've hired a ton of people that now I get to call my coworkers. And one thing that I really wish that people would interview for more, and I've never been asked about this in an interview, is how someone gives feedback. So, Something that might even be a little more important is do they care about how they give feedback? Do they care about improving and iterating on how, what that process looks like for them? And do they care about other people? It's a really big indicator of how somebody is going to treat other human beings that they work with. Do they care about this? Or are they just like, no, fuck off. I'm the, meme this computer right now, man. Like, that's the difference in, that's the attitudinal difference in someone that's going to be great to work with versus someone who might be really smart and might you know, know how to ship their face off, but they're not people that you want to be around every day. Or that's interested in working with you or having a really a working relationship with you. Uh, so I've run into this in my career as far as like feedback processes go. I've run into this, and I've also run into this. None of these are constructive feedback. None of them. There's nowhere to go from this. What you're basically saying is put it back the way it was. And that's not change, it's not motion. So there's this really great thing um, that's uh, the number one rule of improv. Has anyone ever heard this? Yeah, cool. So this is actually a really good rule that I've taken into giving feedback. And it's what I look for in people that I want to work with. And it's say yes and. If you say no to somebody or you say you know, one of these things, you're not, there's nowhere to go. There's no conversation to be had. You leave that person feeling awful about themselves and the work that they've just done. And there's, like, there's nothing they can take from that and make better. So I want to introduce you guys into to the best way to give feedback. And that's, <laughs> yes, someone laughed at it. The shit sandwich. So this is coined by this amazing human being that I have the pleasure of working with. Um, he's basically, I guess, the equivalent of head of engineering at GitHub. Um, but I work with him on the engineering team. And it's Ryan Tomeko. And he coined this phrase. And here's a visual in case you, you're a more visual learner. Um, it's called the shit sandwich. So I have a really nice definition written down to uh, juxtapose with this disgusting image. OK, so the shit sandwich is start with something really positive and encouraging. You don't have to lie about it. You don't have to tell someone something that isn't true. Um, what you do is you say something positive and just helpful, like, oh, I'm really glad you're hacking on this. Or, or write a super fun emoji combo. Emoji are your friends. They can help you like, totally be a friendlier person. And I think they've totally helped me give better feedback, or at least make people feel more appreciated. Um, and then you give them the shit. You give them the parts that are not so great, something that they can take and make better. And you tell them exactly what you hate about them, or hate not about them as a person. <laughs> It's a little telling. Uh, I'm not resentful. Um, so you tell them exactly what the parts of their design or the parts of you know, their code. You can do this with code reviews, too. You tell them exactly what you didn't like about it. If you just tell someone, I hate this, OK, that's cool. I guess I'm never going to ask you for feedback again. But if you tell them exactly what they can make better, they're going to have a better working relationship with them. And it's going to get through to them. So, and then you um, end it with something else positive or constructive. I think every elementary school teaches this. It's not as graphic, obviously. Um, but they definitely teach this, where it's like, say, say two good things and then a bad thing. Or they have some kind of formula for it. Um, this is brilliant. And this is how you're going to have good working relationships with your teammates. Ask for help. Uh, don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, if you want to go fast, so this is a really cheesy quote, um, but I'm really into it. If you want to go fast, go alone. Um, and if you want to go far, go together. 
So I'm, I really try to avoid giving sports analogies to computer programmers, because I know how much they hate them. But this one is really good, so please, please, please bear with me. Um, in another life, I was a softball player. I played softball for 14 years, and I played in college. And I had the pleasure of working with um, a fantastic woman who was a really excellent coach. She said a lot of smart things, but she said something really specific about team dynamics. And she said, each one of, she sat us all down one day on the bench. She's trying to get us to work better together um, and not compete with one another so much for our spots, which I think is actually really similar to startup culture. Uh, you think about the war mentality. Um, but she said, hey, like, you guys are all on this team for a different reason. You all bring something unique to the roster. And you can't win without each other. That's just the bottom line. Like, you cannot win. There needs to be nine of you on that field, and you all need to be working together in order to win the game. And everyone on your team wants to win the game. No one doesn't want to win, and if they're not, you should absolutely fire them. That's another thing. Don't hesitate on firing people ever. Um, so I try to take this into everything I do, um, especially as it pertains to working with other people. Um, as it relates to my design team at GitHub, some of us are really great. UI designers, some of us are fantastic illustrators and some of us are better front-end coders. Don't try to be good at everything all the time. You have to play your strengths and you have to let your teammates make up for your weaknesses with their strengths. And you, the cool thing about it is you can learn from them. We use pull requests for all of our feedback, um, be it code reviews or visual feedback. And what we do is we, um, we then have a URL for everything. Like we have a URL for every design decision and we can point new people to that. So that really helps with the onboarding thing. If you're growing a team really fast and you don't wanna have to repeat, oh, we had this design fight two weeks ago. Um, you don't wanna have to repeat that to someone. Do it all with a URL. Put it somewhere and point to it. These things are gonna change every time you add someone to your team. Um, but let them experience that conversation without shutting them out. So there's this great quote, and I, I usually, usually, or usually use it towards Muni in San Francisco, and it's like, if you can't spot the crazy person on the bus, it's because it's you. Um, so if you can't spot the visionary in your startup, it's probably you. I just really wanted to say that. Um, one more fantastic human being I'm running out of time is Chrissy Bertigan. She's our user research um, expert, like expert at GitHub, and she does a ton with like, UX research specifically. Um, this is her Twitter handle. I was, I was dealing with someone that was really, really difficult um, at GitHub or on my team, and I really wanted to work better with them, um, but I was so angry at them for being a dick. Like, I was so angry for them not taking, being more considerate of, you know, other people's time and my time specifically. Uh, and Chrissy said something really smart to me, and she was like, Julie, everyone is doing their best. Some days, some people's best really suck. And you're just like, God, is that really your best? And you, you almost can't believe it, but it is. It's their best. Everyone's doing their best, whether or not it's, it might not be good enough, but they're doing their best. So keep that in mind when you get into, you know, internet flame wars with people. And another thing on hiring, not having to work with those guys is the best recruiting bonus ever, ever. I was going to play a video, but I ran out of time. So if you guys have a chance, go check out Kid President, and he's, he, he can give you a really sweet pep talk about getting on the same team as someone else. Um, check that out and let's be on each other's teams. We're on each other's teams. Um, you guys are all wonderful people. You guys are my people, you're technology people. Um, and I think that when we start, when we put the human aspect back into writing software and shipping software, we're all gonna have a much better time here. Thank you guys.